Hey, good morning. So um, actually, just to reflect a little bit on the previous um, big questions, and there were questions, what the difference between the city and the smart city? Do you know the answer? I know the answer. <laughs> I think, uh, and let me just kick off at this, because there are multiple slides and they can be available online. And, and it's not my purpose here to, to show you the slides. My purpose here is that you, if you have a question, so you walk away with an answer. So and I will do it as much as possible. And you can come back to me, <laughs> to Changing Places group where I work right now, or anywhere where I'm gonna go in my world. So uh, that's my purpose of life. And the answer is purpose. So if you know the answer to the purpose, so if the, you know the answer to the question, what's the purpose of a city? You, you know the answer, what's the purpose of a smart city? So pretty much smartness just increases the capabilities of achieving the same thing. And now is the question, what's the purpose of a city? <laughs> And actually, when we look to how we solve different kind of problems, and there are a list of problems, so oftentimes we kind of want to look back where the cause is, but sometimes we just stop looking backwards or looking to the root of the problem enough that we find the actual root, like, like the initial point of it. And I think that's one of the things that drives science, and also I think the business helps there too, so that we need to push back the the questioning where the problem emerges. And rather than focus on finding that and solving it, rather than looking into some intermediate uh, symptoms <laughs> that we are trying to, which is also good. So we need to do also the medicine and the preventive medicine. So it's all, all good. So now coming back to the topic after this introduction. And uh, so I do work on, as I call it, sometimes persuasive cities for sustainable, sustainable well-being, sometimes as a persuasive well-being, just to shorten it down. Uh, the question is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna give you the answer closer to the end of the slides if you manage to get there. But now let's talk about changing places. So that's a group in the Media Lab. And we look at cities. So this is a city many years ago. Uh, this is a city uh, that we have on our planet right now. By the way, the sign up there uh, says that the, the traffic is good. <laughs> so what, what to do with this? And uh, certainly we would, we would, if we would think, okay, let's do a change. And we would look at what we have right now where the car is the king. And if we would ask ourselves what would be the best alignment of the different mobility modes on the street, that contributes to our well-being and health and sustainability, we would say this. And now, it's a, it, that, I think that's the, one of the hugest questions. So how to make a change happen? Uh, and by the way, yeah, that's the title of the another workshop today, <laughs> Advancing Well-Being, How to Make Change Happen. But now, answer from the Changing Places group is, we, we work on the innovations for cities or for urban spaces. We have uh, innovations that are engineered so they have the electrical engineering component, mechanical engineering, software engineering, and so forth. And there's another engineering part, which I do. It's called social engineering. <laughs> so all of the innovations have to be wrapped in a, in, a, in a way that people would use them in a proper manner and would actually benefit from that. Let me give you an example. So when you, I don't know, arrive to the media lab or to the MIT, not 100% people are able to connect to internet or any other place. The question is, is it something wrong with the internet? Not always. So there's this social component, so there's this human component. And the better all the technical innovations are wrapped into the social engineering wrap, the better it's, um, the higher is success of it, pretty much. So now coming back to the five innovations that we do. First is mobility on demand. We work on persuasive electric vehicle. We hear the word persuasive. So what the persuasion means? It's all about achieving a behavioral change. So it's a tricycle, it's, it fits for the bike lanes, it's, uh, it has pedals, uh, there is electric assist, and uh, we're gonna run a lot of persuasive messaging or socially influencing messaging 
on the vehicle. So we are designing it right now. Uh, it has already a shape <laughs> and wheels, and it has um, machine learning, and, it's, uh, and it has autonomy. And this is actually like a year old. So we have a newer ones in Taipei, in Taiwan, with a cover and everything. So it's real and it's working and it's gonna be uh, excelling in the years to come. So that's one thing how we think that these kind of vehicles, which is single occupancy and uh, autonomous, so we can move packages around in the night, is gonna, and this, yeah, that was a, that was a computer vision. So gonna, gonna, gonna help solving the mobility problems. And once we introduce, and here we, have, we saw a switch from the red dots to the blue dots, so that's what's from the regular, regular transportation modes to the shared um, electric ones. And this is a candle square where uh, the red parts were shown where the parking is right now that cars occupy would be shifted over to development of, I don't know, residential or commercial spaces. That was one thing, the mobility thing. Uh, City Home actually was part of the Changing Places a year ago or two. Now it's a startup out of the lab and it works on transformable furniture. It's quite successful, so all the guys, all the researchers that were working on this group now are working in a startup, or I would say it's a business and they live in these kind of apartments, having dinners most likely like this and having other stuff. Uh, pretty much also you can saw that uh, it's gesture control and voice control. I was part of the, one of the experiments and you know how it feels? Impressive, you, you, move, <laughs> you move everything just by saying, it's just closet, move left and it does. So yeah. That's another thing, so innovations for cities, and why this is important, the transferable, transformable furniture helps to live in a smaller units <laughs> and have fun in a smaller units, <laughs> so you can afford living closer to what you want. Maybe that's downtown, maybe closer to your work. Uh, and then a lot of work we put into sensors, motion sensors, humidity sensors, noise sensors, health sensors, cameras, algorithms, and so forth. And this is just uh, how the sensors are actuated in one of the uh, rooms. I think, yeah, in the different rooms in one apartment. And by that, we can learn how people behave. And then we can look at the elderly, we can look at the kids, we can look at everyone and learn what are the behaviors. And then if we want to make a change, sensor's gonna tell the story where we want to change something and then we can uh, intervene with the persuasion or social influence. So that's uh, second part. So first was mobility. The second is uh, home. And this is City Farm, which was also part of the Changing Places. Now it's a separate initiative at the lab. It's pretty much about uh, having... Um, hydroponics. <laughs> so you can see it also in the lab in the first floor. And I, well, why I'm still showing it is because I believe for the future cities there has to be... Um, coherent way of looking at the whole spectrum of challenges, and I think mobility is one, uh, housing is second, and uh, food is third, regardless of the numbers. And this would be one of the pictures we would see the future uh, cities having these farms outside of the uh, high rises where vegetables are just grown without soil, just using aeroponics. A city scope, that's the fourth one, we use Legos. How many of you have touched a Lego? <laughs> How many of you have been to Legoland? <laughs> All right, you can, you can visit third floor, there's another Legoland here. <laughs> so what do we do with Legos? We build cities and we build the cities such a way that everyone can stand around a table like this and move a building, which you cannot really do in any other software or in reality. Once you move the building, depending on what's in the building, whether it's residential or commercial or anything else, changes changes a lot of parameters in a city, like walkability, like impact to health, maybe impact to well-being, depends where, uh, what things are located. And we do a lot of kind of a more tinier details around the Lego tables. This is agent-based modeling. So different dots represent different categories of people based on their income or their education or their employment. And based on how we relocate school or relocate 
big company or relocate a bar, different kind of dots move different places. So we can really see how a change into the city would influence behavior of people. And that's just another way of looking at the Lego-based model right there. That's called view cube. So just a sensor that you put into the built Lego model, and it would show you this experience as, as, I, as you would walk through it, literally having uh, this scenery around you. And that's another technological possibility to look at the flat model, but using this augmented real reality, you would see it as a more real, as a more three-dimensional. Uh, that was Lego-based city innovations, and this is the fifth component, persuasive cities, which I work on, so this social engineering part. And that's all about how we sometimes forget that design influences behavior. And uh, you can see a lot of examples in reality as well. This is just one of them. And there are different attempts kind of uh, help people to remember, actually, your choice determines your well-being in the end. So engineering, of course, is, is going to influence that one way or the other. But in the end, this is, this is not like a real stairs. It's a poster at the back of the elevator. But still, it sells you. And that's in Turkish. It says, love your heart, get moving. And there are these kind of messaging. OK, let's just give you, tell what's, what's best. OK, this is this way. This is the other way. Unfortunately, these kind of forms not always are successful. Do you know why? Everyone can read that and say, yes. Does everyone do that? No. This is an example from Austria, Vienna. They've put a lot of infrastructure for bicycling on the streets over the four years. Did the bicycling behavior increase accordingly? No. A lot of these kind of things are based on the fact that these three components are interconnected. So you might change the city infrastructure, which is on the right-hand side, and um, you would expect that behavior increases. But there's a third element in the game, which is attitude towards behavior. So people have different barriers in their heads why they don't do it. Maybe they think that's, that's not cool. That's one barrier and so forth. And when people usually try to overcome these barriers, they use these two things. Have you seen these before? <laughs> this is very tasty on the left-hand side. This is very painful on the right-hand side. But somebody needs to do that all the time. And once you take these away, what people do? They get relaxed and <laughs> come back to what they did before. What I do instead of this, I don't use this. I, I say these are like, hmm. Maybe useful, maybe not, but this is very powerful. What is, what is this? So you imagine you walk on a street and you see this happening. What do you do? You, you most likely think, oh, these people look up. There must be a reason why they look up. Let me think. <laughs> no, you just look up. This is how powerful social influence is. And when, once we leverage that power of other people around us through the technologies to help people get healthier, or, or towards their own well-being. That's where the power or, or, or like a more long-term uh, change can happen. I really feel I don't need to comment anything here, <laughs> except the fact that this is a Photoshop. <laughs> but imagine, this would work, right? And this is what I work on, and I believe strongly this is the future of uh, large-scale changes. And the changes, first of all, uh, I mean the physical changes are important and are fundamental, but then the most trickier changes are here. And this is what I believe we can do it already right now, because infrastructural change is going to take a year or more or 10 years or, or a lot of money. But the changes towards the attitude, we can do it already now. And this is the framework that I use. And these have three components. Data source, which is sensors, smart cities, a lot of hype around that. Let's make smarter decisions. Like, let's understand what, what's happening. It's just a question. Once we understand what's happening, what's next? And oftentimes, people don't know. And that's why I'm saying we need to have this layer of persuasion or social influence where we know what tools we can use to make a change happen like the examples before. 
And these are the studies that we've run. This is about engaging actual employees and their commutes to work and back in Boston, Cambridge area. We had 14 companies, including Google, Boston Children's Hospital, and software firms and architectural firms. We ranked them based on the bicycling behavior as a commute to work and back uh, into the ranks. And we asked these ranks to be shown on the screen in their offices. So all the people that also were like, not participating in the study, they were aware where the company stand. And they see the company stand in the second place. And they think, what can I do? And you know the answer, get the bike. So, and we work some of the, these kind of innovations. This is persuasive electric vehicle, and these are the examples of persuasion on it. So the exterior color can change the, uh, exterior can change the color depending whether you pedal or not. So promoting pedaling, if you pedal, you're green. If you're not, you're red, and everyone can see that. And then internally, you can look at the previous behaviors of riders on the same vehicle. So if you see that previously, riders actually pedaled 80%, so you start to question yourself. What's wrong with me if I don't? So if others, others could do it. So these are examples. And this is the final one, which I would like to conclude. Eiffel Tower, how many years stands in Paris? More than 100. What was the purpose of the Eiffel Tower? Today, the Eiffel Tower can become a communication channel. It can tell you what's happening, regardless of the numbers there you can figure out what you would like to communicate to the visitors and to the residents of Paris. So the built infrastructure that was built 100 years ago today can become a socially influencing platform just using the technology. Thank you.